with success. Top Esports, for the first time, will pull off the re reverse sweep. Top Esports will face off against Suning in the semi-finals. It all starts with failure. Now come Vitality, disrupting Fnatic's ball game winning streak and taking only their second win this season. It all starts with a monologue. Stop! No, no, no. One, <laughs> you don't get to do, do this. No, one, you don't get to do this. Two, we had enough, like really. I, I expected better from you. I don't want to hear it anymore. No. Up as we continue the second half of the regular season. Welcome to the analyst desk where I've got Sheepy and the best NA export the world has to give. Daniel D. Dracos. No, Ooh. Daniel Dracos. Call him Daniel D. Dracos. Whatever. Uh, why, why not? <laughs> Works out for me. And you know what? I'm glad that we're flaming Ender already. It's two seconds in. Oh, already. I didn't even think about that, oh, she Ender. says. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Let's talk about the league. Yesterday, of course, pivotal day in the race for playoffs. Crossed that halfway mark. Let's look at how it shook up the standings. A lot of action in the middle of the pack. Who were the winners of yesterday? I mean, clearly, I have to point out Vitality here. <laughs> I mean, they're si uh, showing signs of line, lives, right? So, <laughs> signs of line. Shines Mostly of life, though, agreed. <laughs> Vitality, you know signs of life. So yeah, I think the solo kill obviously in top lane is one of the nicest plays that happened again later on. So I mean, Vipo, the solo king god, basically slain down. And yeah, I'm having more hope now for Vitality. I think they said it themselves in the interview perfectly. We wanted to fight more. We just went in in the scrims and they did on stage as well. And this is such a massive win for a team that we know has historically struggled with confidence issues. We've heard about how Skeens has a hard time transitioning some of his scrim level performance to stage. That was not an issue yesterday. And the man on your screen there, you've heard him in the interview as well. The Shigenda, uh, this, the Aatrox performance was disgusting. European fans were like a little bit torn. Can we appreciate Aatrox that looks this good? Or do we have to be sad about that time that we got blasted at Worlds? Yeah, exactly. What? Why do you have to keep doing this? I didn't even think about that. And now it's right back from and center, but for the vitality, I think you make a great point in terms of uh, momentum at this crucial of a point in the season for someone like Shigenda to have an amazing performance, for someone like Skeens to have that confidence game, that could be the beginning of the new start for Vitality. Moving on, another team we had our eyes on, SK Gaming, opened up the week with a win over Schalke. Now, that's not an easy feat by any stretch of the imagination. Good by them. No, absolutely not. And Schalke, of course, taking some risks in draft and SK very quickly punishing. The early game was much slower than I think we initially expected, but once the team composition fully came online from the side of SK, it almost looked effortless. The coordination was there. We're continuing to see the bot lane for this team, especially leveling up week after week. And it's a project that I'm getting more and more excited about the more time that they have on stage. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday as well, where we said like SK five rookies, they really need time to grow. And we wanted them to be the rogue you know, in the future as well as they are right now. And I see more and more light of that. Um, they are doing fantastic. I think the bot lane is stepping up massively as they need to. They could be the carries that we're looking out for in the future. Yeah, uh, not exactly five rookies, but very young players. I think that's a fair thing to say. Yes. And a lot of players that have their first team in the LEC. Not as veteran as other No, players. exactly. <laughs> it's it's a hard one because, you know, they're, they're somewhere in between. Now talking about another rookie in the LEC then, El Yoya, who of course had a lot of experience behind his belt in the ERLs, but fantastic game by him his, yesterday with the Mad Lions. And when we talk about bot lane performance sheet, they popped off. Yeah, I mean, Dracos is more the camp SK bot lane and they, he's super hyped about them. I'm more in like Kaiser's direction. I mean, when I saw this guy play the first time well, I was so excited. Before that, you thought this champion deals no damage, it's just a CC bot. But when he started playing it, pop off performance yesterday, amazing gameplay. I'm really looking forward to seeing me off their bot lane and yeah, Good job, and El Yolia, obviously, On also your shiny star. Boy. Look, you, you, can, you can tell me that Kaiser set it up, and Kaiser, very, very good supporter. But, cool. but this man, this man played 
that beautiful, beautiful mess of a champion. Yes. Is he balanced? Probably not. Is he very powerful? Absolutely yes. I loved it from El Yoy. I love the setup that he got from his team, the support that he got, even when it looked like he might fall behind in the early game. Some clever path and got him some early ganks, allowed him to snowball, and we got to see just how crazy powerful that Shadow Assassin is. Great stuff. Movement in the middle of the table. Stacked games, and the LEC itself is also stacked with talent in every position, but which one stands out above the rest? You can join us as we discuss the best lane in the league right now. Head over to discord.lec.gg and you can vote on top, jungle, mid, or bot. It is the age-all debate, you know, what is the strongest role, especially in the context of the LEC. Let's start with the mid lane. Give me your arguments. I mean, it is the mid lane. Okay. I, <laughs> All right, I mean, discussion you took done. The, yeah, <laughs> it is the mid lane. No, but, okay. No discussion, you know. Go ahead. But I, I'm just bringing some points, you know, to entertain the crowd here. Um, since 2017, this is the first time that mid laners are actually dealing the most damage in the team. I don't think that's only because of the meta change, because we had metas where there were carry champions in the mid lane as well. I think it's just our mid laners are so goddamn good. They're dealing so much damage. They're just taking most of the gold as well. And I think, yeah, I mean, if we're looking to a stop position, it's just mid lane all yeah, around. Is it the chicken or the egg? Is it, you know, the champions that are played? Is it the meta or is it the players? Because that's what we're talking about. Are our players stacked in the mid lane? And you know what? Four. The truth is, every role is kind of stacked, but one one role stands above the rest. As great as our mid laners are, bot lane is where we have to look. I mean, come on. We've got the reckless Mickey bottom lane. We've got the upset Hillisang bottom lane. Already right there, that's enough, but you just won. Oh, should we go to the other ones? We've got Han Sam and Trimby looking good. Uh, look at Treats. I'm treats. Getting a call. He went to NA. Caps he came like back stronger. I don't care but about Nisky? Caps. I don't care. He's getting roams from Mickey diet. every game. Look at you praised Kaiser earlier. Okay, now she be double down. Kaiser. Put your money where your mouth is. Kaiser and these <laughs> bot lanes, they are the king of the LEC right now. And yes, I may have rigged the vote a little bit by being able to put two roles together yes, <laughs> into a single say. category. But the performances are immaculate. Even Jeskla, on one of the teams that is struggling the most in the league right now, played so clean in this matchup versus G2 on the Zaya. I mean, I have to I have to agree there on a point. Obviously, I'm a huge Kaiser fan, so yeah. <laughs> All bot lanes are really strong. But is it the items, perhaps? Is it the meta? Because Gale Force sitting at, like, I think, comfortable 55, 60% oh win rate, right? Where are the mid lane champion items? Shibi, they heard you were talking shit, by the way. <laughs> oh, <they're, laughs> they're, 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 I mean, bot lanes. Have a katana? <laughs> My god. Uh, but yeah, I think I can find an argument in both. The mid laners are stacked, as you can see. Two examples of great bot lanes here in the LEC as well. A statistical standout, of course, Reckless, who has been crushing it. Um, we haven't even talked about top and jungle. What does that say? Are they not stacked at all, analysts? They are really great. They're really I'm great. I'm a huge fan of White Vipo, especially with all his solo kills. He got kills. solo killed yesterday, yeah, he's, all right. Yeah, he got also solo kill. I think he's he just giveth like... giveth and he taketh away. <laughs> exactly. He's the giveth and the taker of <laughs> I, I, so I wanted to suggest if in the statistics, when someone has the solo kills, whenever he gets solo killed, it gets detracted. Yes. So that in the so end... So that we just have to score the yes. post score? Is it a negative? He just score, score, minus exactly. four or something yeah. like this. Might be a good idea. Um, however, it seems that the people sided with Dracos bot lane, most stacked role in the LEC, according to Discord. 800 votes. Jungle in second rigged. with 200. Absolutely so rigged. The EU mids, it's dead. It's wait, okay, wait. Dead. Jungle at right. 200. Wait, oh no, that's probably the EU mids are probably in the middle. No? Wait, no, I mean, if that's second place, that's, that's crazy. 800. 800. 800. 800. Excuse me, what can you repeat, this? Kevin? 80. 80 mid. 80? 80? Wow! <laughs> okay, I have Yo, to say. Okay, okay guys, I'm caps alone should get them second or third place at most. 80? I mean, this all is of crazy. them humanoid is really insane. Abadaga last year, especially. I mean, he Yeah, was now I feel like I have to go away bed. from bot lane just because yeah. this is such an offense okay. to mid lane. We just side with the crowd. It's yes, fine. the bot lane. Yes. It's fine. We you knew it all along. It. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as said, we've already seen some standout performances because we're over halfway through the regular season already. And the LEC has already delivered some unforgettable moments. Let's take a look back. Madlines don't have too oh, much. There we go. Treeman pulverize. pulverize. Olaf definitely looking really strong. So they're now just going to bow through the entire Mad Lions lineup. They push the trigger. And we got to play in the bot side 2v2. Let's go. All right, Nisky and Armut are currently trading for the time being. We're both joins the break. Humanoid's got the Emperor's Divide. He's going to need to use it to buy time, and he does. Armut escapes with his life for now. What? Nisky with the huge outplay. Oh my gosh. Don't okay, this is like animals. worlds. Ooh. This is like worlds. I think LPL. Drake off his LPL, and then first he was like. 
the LCK couldn't touch him, the LCK couldn't touch him, and then boom. Why are we enabling this? <laughs> I don't know. Kind of hurt because he's surrounded by four members of SK. Gideas tries to jump onto Jezu, but Gideas is the one who's targeted down by SK. Fates call in from Treats. That's another. Tinks gets the shutdown on Gideas, and now this Ocean Dragon is Whoa! level. Sharima slide in Shalka. Lemon gets the kill on Blue, but there's an answer, and Tinks is still chasing. It's going to be a four for one in favor of SK. A quadra kill for the Doctor in the jungle. The bubble sleeps under Nisky, and the Panel Star won't find the target. But Odeo goes forward with a spike. That's a golden Nisky. Panel Star oh. goes forward, and self made runs away. He gets another one. Look at him. Bto goes in. He gets the bubble to double kill, and Upset can do nothing but watch. I mean, do you ever wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night and realize that they may never win the world championship again and your whole existence is doomed? Ouch. Jeez. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna come back. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna hit you. also gonna have to give a little Sandra. respect to him. And there we go. There is the <laughs> I love it. I love to see it. <laughs> For the rest of Fnatic are on their way. A double for Whippo. Genex, no place to go, no way to escape. On his way up, still unkilled at the 15 minute mark as Whippo flashes forward. <laughs> Whippo dives in, the broken blade. Onto Tinks. Oh no, it is. I'm just kind of doing like a visual representation oh, yeah. of, of SK's base right now. I built this bat. I, I can only imagine that this might be Tyler 1. <laughs> right. I'm, not, I'm not totally sure, but <laughs> for something to be this bad, it has to be Tyler. But. <laughs> yes! Oh, this is amazing! <laughs> This one for Odawami, he gets locked up, he gets taken down, and now G2 are set to take the tower as well. Don't worry about it, because one chunk is one tower. Trimby gets the knockback, knockback, wonder knock through the wall. Oh, still gonna be able to find the kill, but here comes Larson in the midst of everything, and pushes the back of the wall, this is massive for Larson. G2 will find the game and tie up first place with Rogue, seven and two. Oh. Love it. Why? Trevor duck on the, the table. Why does he think that was the call? Like people <laughs> see that you're there at that point. Like the day, like walk away. Like it's not like we have object permanence. You know, we're all above the age of three. He didn't just disappear because we can't see him. Oh anymore. yeah, it's so good, um, man. I didn't expect to get emotional. Oh, am I kidding? I'm always getting emotional. Uh, but it's pretty crazy. We're only at the halfway point. Big shout out to just everyone behind the scenes because we're still in a pandemic. We get to be here, but it's not as easy as it looks to come up with all these ideas yeah, to yeah. keep it a diversified show so shout out to everyone who you don't see i mean unless they run in front of the camera when the segment starts um moving on i know it's a lot of fluff you know we like to have a lot of fun here in the lec but onto a bit more serious analysis and we have sheepy who at worlds with unicorns of love of course created what was known as the sheepy draft kingdom and today he's going to share his knowledge with the lec fans and how the teams can better their drafts let's first pull up one of the uol drafts at worlds because you had a couple of wacky ones as we have come to expect so I present the draft kingdom right after this game <laughs> uh swain was perma bent against us um as you can see in this draft very nicely we have two ap sources two ad sources good engage we have good scaling. I remember this game very clearly. We first pick Renek, and then afterwards we go Hurricane and Oriana. Strong combo together. And then they blind pick Jin. We go the Swain. <laughs> and uh, the rest is history. We the destroy rest them. Is history. Easy game. So, yeah, this was like his test if he was allowed to talk about drafts. Yeah. Think he passed. If you like this, <laughs> stick on. Watch the LCL. Yeah, yeah. Unicorns oh. of Love. True. But also, I think the thing that Sheepy, that you've always done really well, and I think has also been a strength of the LCL as a region, is really highlighting some of these player comfort picks, being willing to still play meta, but also branch out when it's appropriate to find the counter picks. And I think it gave you an edge here in the EU uh, LCS, back when the Unicorns of Love were playing here, and it's clearly also giving you an edge in the LCL. And it's something that, frankly, I think we could do more of in the LEC, finding these niche comfort picks to counter meta options. Yeah, I think you put that greatly. That's exactly what Sheepy offers. So, Sheepy, what you're going to do is tell us what is the team's identity. Yeah. And thus, what should they pick, starting with G2? Yeah, I like G2 a lot because it's really interesting how they are structuring their drafts. I think it's very clear cut what they can do very well and what they don't like to do. And what they can do very well is fighting. They're fighting all the time. I think in their win, we can see that they just have champions that allow them to play make. And I think this is really the identity that they should be going for. Deny enemy anything that can disengage, like the Thresh of Helios, like anything Asia, where the enemy can run away. 
this is where they're going to win. I want to especially show the Vitality draft because I think this one really highlights how you can basically structure a draft so it's towards your strength. Uh, they have the Quinn into the Renekton, they have a counter pick there. They have the better and more aggressive jungler. They have mid lane prior. We remember that Rice just went bot lane ultimated. Yeah. So awesome job there. So for G2, all I want to see is deny all of those picks that are annoying to fight against and get priority lanes, start fighting more aggressively. And really leveraging the strength of their solo laners is something we can just continue to expect to yep. see from G2. But I think it's one of the things where G2 are clearly in the mind that if we just draft winning lanes and have some pieces, it doesn't need to be the Wombo combo Orion and Jarv in every game. We can win out on individual advantages and find the right fights. And frankly, part of the reason that they're so good is because they can do that. Absolutely. A vastly different team is Excel. You know, they approach the game in a different way. What can you say about their draft? Yeah, and they're still racking up uh, wins. And I yeah. think it's very clearly where their style is lying, and it's more towards very strong mid game, very structured team fights, grouping together. I don't think they have the individual talent or experience to really challenge the other teams that are so good at that. And so if we're checking out their wins, especially uh, against, for example, um, Vitality, sorry. <laughs> against yes, Vi stands for Vitality. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> against Vitality, I think really strong game. We're remembering Kreis on, uh, um, on Shogath, extremely strong performance. And in their losses, you can see, I mean, it's literally, I've been asking me that the entire day, why the hell would you ever pick Kalista Jarvan, last rotation, into Alistair Kaiser. It makes zero sense. I think the game was really sloppy, so I really want them Why to... Why does it make zero sense for our plebs? Because Alistair is like known as the counter against Kalista. Like, to everybody, you just combo in, there's no play. You cannot engage. How do you start the Jarvan ultimate onto the Kaiser? She's not a mobile, she has an ultimate. I mean, there's an Alistair frontline. They didn't show anything. It's not like they're known for that, so yeah, I think... This was like kind of a bad, you know, bad draft, really bad draft. But I think if they're drafting like that, we've seen that they're super consistent, that they exactly know how to play it. And yeah, if Exo is going to win, I think we need more drafts where it's for mid-game team fighting. Yeah. And I think issues with the bot lane aside that Sheepy pointed out, this is also just a massive shift away stylistically from what Excel have been very successful on. You highlighted it at the start. Again, scaling compositions have worked so well for them. They have one of the worst early games in the league statistically. So drafting for early game, while I respect the effort to like yeah. branch out, like obviously at some point you need to improve your early game, but this was not the look. And right now, you just need to get wins to get to playoffs, Excel. Like and, don't get ahead of yourself. they obviously don't know exactly how to do that because that, I mean, even if it's early game Kalista, it's not how you draft early game. You need to have a really good match. Maybe if we ask them, they're like, hey, well, we wanted to try something. Which sure. fair game awesome. there. Yeah. Um, finally, I'd love to hear you talk about Schalke because they've been so weird to pin down in terms of identity for me. Yeah, exactly. Schalke for me is also an oddball. Uh, it seems like some drafts, they are just getting the absolute god drafts. Uh, for example, in their win against Rogue, against G2 when they were winning, it was just so beautiful. They play around their bot lane. They have really good CC setup. They have so much playmaking. They have every champion who can actually do something or is really difficult to deal with. Like, how do you play against an Udia, a TF that can ultimate on side lane? Uh, Klet was picked into Artrox. Artrox was actually destroying that matchup. So, honestly speaking, Sharka needs to go back to that kind of draft where they really find lanes where they can play around bot side. They're not giving enemies too much edge. And uh, as we could see against the SK draft, they pick Nidalee and Zoe like early. They get countered by Skana. None of those champions can play into it. I remember Dracos very vividly being like, Skana, by God, please ultimate those carries. <laughs> then That's they true. did, and it was just the easiest game in the world. So yeah, careful with for being counterpicked and just pick something safe. And they're such a good team. And I think the sad, the sad trend that we're starting to see is, is that I wouldn't have mind this kind of experimentation again at the start of the split, but it's like teams have found winning identities. For both Schalke and Excel, they found formulas for success. And then halfway through the season, when you need wins more than ever, when you're fighting for playoff spots, when you're neck and neck with other teams, and in Schalke's case, when you're on a pretty big losing streak already, two and four, now they're going to mix it up? It, yeah. just, it doesn't add up. There's a place and a time. Do it in scrims, but when you go on stage, that I mean, that didn't seem prepared. Hey, you got it from the sheep's mouth himself, from uh, <laughs> the draft god. Don't do it on stage when we're week five. Schalke as said on a bit of a losing streak, but they have shocked G2 many times before. And today they look to do it again in their match of the week. I, I don't see G2 as a big challenge or a big opponent. Like we just, I'm pretty sure we're just gonna win. Jack is looking like a weird team because they're like uh, they're losing to a lot of the worst teams and winning against some of the better teams. I'm hoping that they will not beat us again, right? Because that would suck. Uh, but this time around, I think we're a bit more comfortable in the meta. I've collected a lot of experience last year, how it is to be at rock bottom and how it feels to climb back up and be at the top. So I think I can use this for the next year to show that I'm one of the best. Match of the week, G2 heavy favorites, but as 
said, Schalke has won versus them many times in the past. Only team in the LEC to have a positive win record in 2020, 2021. And look, so, hey. I know people want real analysis. The real analysis, G2 are heavily favored. But as we've become more and more superstitious with you cursing teams left and right with monologues, I think it's safe to say that maybe now that we're officially underestimating Schalke, Sheepy's talking down on yeah, them. I don't I'm think talking they down on them. They're going to show up. Yeah, maybe now they show up. Maybe yeah, yeah, they're really good. I think they're setting it up. They're losing some games just to make the miracle yeah, it's run happen. Yeah. Strong smart. branding, yeah. strong sure. branding. There's that also meta a, a tweet from Gilius earlier today. It's been a while since I lost to Yanka, so we're going to see <laughs> some battle in the jungle. But uh, all narrative aside, very important game for Schalke if they do manage to win, because like three th then to a four game winning streak versus someone you might meet in the playoffs, ugh, doesn't feel good. Well, and also beating the top teams is really nice if you're contesting for top three. But if you're going to be five, six or four, losing those games that they have lost to the bottom M teams is actually what's going to cost them True. so, so much. So they really can't afford any more mistakes here. Well, we'll see that in the final game of the week, G2 and Schalke. But we have a lot of, I want to say, matches that could even be match of the week contenders. Fnatic versus Matt is also on the docket today, Sheepy. I mean, that's surely a great game to watch as we look at the yeah. schedule. I, I mean, honestly speaking, that's kind of the match of the week for me. Okay. <laughs> I really look forward to that game. I think Fnatic yesterday dropping the game and then Matt Lions winning very convincingly. Also with, I mean, very good play. They're playing super structured. I'm looking forward to that match, Fnatic Midlands. I think the other game I'm looking at is Misfits and SK. I think Misfits have been counting on a downward spiral. They need to turn it around now that we're in the second half. And SK, as I mentioned before, and as I will say again, I'm very excited about SK Gaming right now. And I want to see if they can keep stacking these wins up on top of each other. Because I didn't expect them to be a playoffs contender, but here we are. Here we are indeed. Opening game is XL versus Astralis. And before we get into that, let's take a look back at a golden moment from PGL yesterday. <laughs> no, uh, let's talk about uh, Skarner, then. You love Skarner, uh, clearly so. Picked yeah. him now a couple of times. Even first picked, which was kind of mind-boggling to us. Why do you love the Scorpion so much? Um, I think I think I like the Scorpion because uh, people in the C are too greedy to pay taxes. They are <laughs> trying to scam. They are like, ah, I'm a ID carry. I need I need two item power spike. I need three item power spike. No, and you are dead. How many items you have? If you didn't pay taxes, you are dead. This is how it works. And of course, like versus G2, it doesn't work because G2 understand. Okay, they have Skarner, we have to pay taxes, right? But if you play versus Excel, versus Misfits, like this kind of team, they're like, nah, I need power spike. I have a lot of success. And then I'm like, oh, no, who, 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 flash in. And then, the, and actually, like some people, are, uh, because you, people think and they see, uh, everyone know how to like time summoners play the game. No, this is not true. I just buy cooldown boots and they're like, oh, his flash is not five minutes, boys. Whoa, he has flash or he does have, we don't know. We should just see Hulk Tower. And then it's like passive pressure, mental advantage, and then you can win the game. This is why Scanner is broken. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Oh, what a great interview. What a great guy. Pay your taxes. Actually, good um, rule for life, especially in Germany, because they'll get you. Um, great to see players that come from other leagues that showcase their personality. And our first game is featuring Astralis and the UK team Excel. And there might be more upcoming talent from the NLC. And I'm joined by NLC caster Trouble Inc. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you guys? We are great. Great to see you. Um, and we love to have these regional check-ins about the other leagues. For people who don't know, of course, the NLC is the Northern League of Legends Championship, which is a result of the merger between the Nordic Championship and the UK leagues. So a lot of players to look out for trouble. Maybe let's start with the players that are playing in LEC now that came from the LEC. Coincidence? I think not, because they're both going to be showcased in your first game today. It's going to be the Astralis versus Excel. So it's going to be Dan versus Magi Felix batting heads on that one. They both belonged in Fnatic Rising in the previous split, and they were absolutely amazing, topping the charts and everything. They were absolute gods at the roles. So much versatility when it came to champion pools and the way they played the game. And I just couldn't be more proud seeing them both in the LEC. I love how you say a uh, variety in the champions. Yeah, we've only seen Corky so far. From Magic Felix, but I'm sure he's a corky he's prodigy. Change. So he fine. is. He <laughs> is. Um, secondly, I also want to talk about the other way around. Which people um, do we see now in the NLC that came from the LEC and maybe want to fight their way back up? 
All right, I'm going to start from the two times EU LCS champion, Febiven, who's now playing for Fnatic Ryzen in the mid lane. We actually had a pretty heartfelt interview with Febiven in the NLC. You can check it out if you want to. And he talked about how he thought of quitting at some point. He thought he wasn't good enough. And now he's going back through three arrows, trying to prove to himself that he is good enough and try to cram climb back into the LEC. And we also have Orome, who was ex-top laner for Mad Lions last split, and now he is playing for BTXL in the top lane as well. Also had a very heartfelt interview, and he was like, you know what, I lost my passion for the game, and I just really wanted to prove to myself that I can find it back, and I'm going to fight through the ERLs to jump back up to the top. Uh, fantastic, and I love that we see the dichotomy between the LEC and the NLC and the regional leagues yeah. and how it works both ways indeed. Now, when it comes to the league in the NLC, you guys have just finished your group stage, so what happened? Who finished at the top of the standings? Oh, it's a reoccurring effect, isn't it? <laughs> of course it is BTXL and Fnatic Rising. XL has an amazing uh, road so far with 9-1, and one, only one loss. Um, in their inventory and Fnatic are doing pretty well as well on eight and two. It has been sort of like BTXL, uh, sorry, Fnatic is like BTXL's nemesis because Fnatic is holding three titles back to back in the UK and Nordic scene after they got merged together. And just BTXL can just not seem to find a way to beat them. They also had a reverse sweep over them in the finals where BTXL got the 2-0 head, uh, head start and then they got zero, uh, two three. So we're gonna have to wait and see because it's gonna be extremely bloodthirsty. Exactly. Um, well, we'll talk about the playoffs maybe in a second, but first I'd like to know from you, because I've heard that you've had some good predictions in the past about who would be the next big LEC star. So who are we looking out in the NLC for next year maybe in the LEC? Okay, quick sneak peek, because I was really stunning my boy Trimby, and I said he's going to be the next big support in the LEC, and here he is, uh, shining bright like a diamond. But... Please, please, please keep your eyes peeled on Malkun, BTXL jungler. This guy is absolutely insane. In 10 games played, he has had seven unique champions, ranging from AD carries to AP carries to tanks. His pathing is so insanely clever, and he gets away with plays that he shouldn't be, just because he's so mechanically gifted, which in turn enables his laners to be relieved off of jungle pressure. If this guy gets ahead, and he will, don't forget that. There's just no stopping him. And I just want to say that I just know that after the Fnatic loss, you know, G2 is looking for a new jungler. Now they know where to find him. Oh my God. Don't get him over to the pool then, because that's where they do all their businesses. Uh, so we want to watch, of course, the teams in the NLC, especially Markun. When can we watch the playoffs? Well, uh, we're just done, as you mentioned, with our group stage. So on March the 2nd, our playoffs begin. And we have, obviously, we have more teams than Fnatic Rising and BTXL. But these are the two big names. We're expecting them in the finals. But there's a lot more analysis can happen. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Trouble. We'll be looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, have a Thank nice you. day. All right. Thank cool. you. Always love hearing that, because as I said, we always get a, a, a big load of new players and a lot of players coming from those regional leagues. So it's good to be ahead of the curve, right? All I'm saying with Markoon is that his name is very close to Macnoon, one of my favorite players of all True. time. So I'm already rooting for him. You know, it's like the little things that bring me back. I'm already invested. I want to see this man rise up. <laughs> well, let's see now for the current lineups of Excel and Astralis. Uh, looking at their game yesterday, Excel, they have a lot to prove. They were on a winning streak, then it got broken, and now it seems that they've lost the play a little bit cheapy. Yeah, today is really important for me to see if Excel really, you know, still has it. If they win this game, that would give so much faith back for me because before that, yesterday, we talked about Excel's rise, how we're really believing in the organization itself. It would be so important for them to finally reach playoffs and make something. So if they win today against G2, that, I mean, it would be amazing. They're not up versus G2. It would be super impressive if they won oh, versus Astral G2. Oh, Astralis. <laughs> Astralis. Yeah. But I, I'm with you. If wait, they were if able they, to that's they, they change the schedule. <laughs> if they would change. Okay. Against Astralis, it's a must win, really, for yeah, them. Yeah. I, I love if, how that, like, put it in perspective. <laughs> Like, they're not I'm playing sorry. G2? Oh, they're fine. They're going to be <laughs> they're great. <fine>. Yeah, <laughs> Excel, let's go. No, but yeah. after yesterday's draft, like, I just hope that they don't do that again. I don't. I, I just hope that they're playing for the mid game for the stuff that they can really do and just don't try to 50 50 burger flip it in the early game. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. don't do it. Just please play for the mid game. Take the safe lanes and play around your greater you know, team cohesion. Yeah, and I think right now that the XL players are probably taking that loss pretty hard. Tori had a very rough game, so I yeah. won't try to compound on that or make it any more difficult than it is. I'm hoping that this is a day where they can reset, get back to the basics, get back to what has been winning them games before because you can't really afford to lose to Astralis. And Astralis are a team that after their game yesterday, are starting to look like a threat. Like, this is not a team you can afford to sleep on anymore. I agree. I mean, we had the Zanzara highlight in the interviews, but it was also a highlight in the game. They really pushed G2. 
Yeah, and I think, I mean, they're not sounding like a team that feels in any way like, uh, you know, sad about all the losses. I mean, Zanzara <laughs> seems as lively as ever. And I mean, they have so many chances to win this, and especially this one is so unbelievably heartbreaking. Yeah, and this is an example where if they were a little bit cleaner, if they were a little bit more calm and composed in this team fight, then they definitely could have come out on top. You can see G2 playing this one very well. Yeah, I mean, I feel I can just quote my favorite streamer here with Skara. Like, they were winning until the point that they lost. Perfect. It works every time. Fantastic stuff. So Especially this good. week is where the race for playoffs kicks off for real this time. And Excel versus Astralis is a game that can make or break the season for both teams.